merge the notes and then tell it to the student. And the student said that it was like a, a transcript of everything I said. But she said I literally I had to Can class memorize. If you want to, yeah, absolutely. So how do I get like a note taker? Uh, oh, I mean, if you need a note taker, you have to go to the counseling office and you have to talk to them about. But they may know how to take that. Well, you have to be diagnosed for a learning yeah, you disability. Have, you gotta have some kind of disability to qualify for the note taker. So you have uh, to be diagnosed like autism. No, I am under ADHD. Um, disability, though. Go talk to the counseling office, then, absolutely. And they'll sign yeah. up right they'll, away to get a note taker. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a whole set of things that they can give you, like extra time for the tests or a note taker, or you can take the tests over there and have a lot more time. And uh, but they, there's like a buffet of things that they can get you that they will uh, set you up. But yeah, if you got like a note from a doctor, uh, they will they will set you up. How does a note taker help me learn better? I mean, that's I'm just better notes. yeah. I'm just saying for her, like she, a she, note she she ended up being she said being a note taker is great because she recorded the lectures and then listen to him again oh, okay. and she said when I she would get the test she would read the question like hear me saying Say, the thing yeah. and she'd be like I remember when he said that um, and so like that on the other hand was like she she would be in class for every hour for she would class probably would be doing notes for like you another two or three extra and post them on I do not typically no crap that would have been great uh, but yeah, if you want to record them yourself, that's absolutely I'll, fine. I'll, if you would I'll listen to them again. The next yeah. I won't miss no more glasses. All right, last question for today. Sure. What is this T T A C? It's like plus and oh, plus, the plus. KKK. Oh, plus. Yeah. Wait, what do you see there? T -T um, you see about halfway down on the right side of the front page? Mm -hmm. It says T -T kind of plus the KKK. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just went plus add right. the KKK. Um, yeah. Thank but, you. So, absolutely. So go over the review sheet, take a look. I mean, we've, yeah. only, we've only covered um, like the first maybe half of the first I, page. Yeah, I was just like getting, I just want to yeah. not have to withdraw. I want to be so Oh, no, I understand. So it, it, it's in the beginning, trying to figure it out seems, what to do with my time. It seems terrifying because we go through a lot of stuff. <laughs> but other than that, I'm, I'm going to ask you stuff that we talked about. I mean, I'm going to ask you, you know, when I ask you questions, it'll all be stuff. We're going to ask you about all the poll tax and that kind of stuff. I'll ask you about Jim Crow okay. and the KKK Act Everything and the KKK you were and the sharecropping. Well, I, I was confused because I didn't know if this was an S or what. What is this? Oh, uh, those are genius because I write terribly. Yes, yeah. you do. If, I, if you can't read it, ask me. If you, <laughs> That's what I was asking. I write terribly. In the back, I'm like, what is he writing? Sometimes I can't read my handwriting. Yeah, if you, if you can't read my handwriting, let me know because if I, if I write it, you can't read it. It doesn't, doesn't help you. Any. Okay, I didn't yeah. want to be rude. That's okay. <laughs> it, won't be, it won't be the first time people have questioned my otherwise flawless handwriting, as you can see. But um, can I leave this here and go to the restroom? Oh, certainly, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I don't go anywhere for a minute. I need to. Okay, thank you. Uh, but yeah, please, if you're confused by anything, let me know. And I, like I said, I know it seems like a huge lot, because we also go fast. There's no... Well, also, like, no one's telling me what to do. That's why I was like, am I supposed to read this? Yeah, and it is a little intimidating, because it's just kind of like, wait for the first test, but then it's also a third of your grade. Uh, but I mean, go over the review sheet, and then if you if you say, okay, um, you know, like 13th Amendment, ban slavery, 14th Amendment, the Reconstruction Amendment, also, 15th I guess Amendment. I mean, we're writing that stuff down now. Uh, I mean, we, we didn't know. It's just, we went over it. And so when you, when you go through the review sheet, if you can, if you can sort of identify um, all of this stuff, then then like you're in good shape. Uh, so the one thing I got to mention, I didn't mention, is 40 acres and a mule. Um, that's the little side in. There was a thing I didn't mention, but we'll let's tell the review sheet. So yeah, we'll get that. I'll make a note in my notes. Um, but yeah, like when when it comes time to study, if you're going through the review sheet, like that's how I write the test. As I sit down and I do, like I got a whole bunch of tests that I've used in the past, and I pull like a question about each thing. And so then I just go from that's all, and that's all the stuff I mentioned. Just triple checking. Yeah, absolutely. I, I understand because it's, it's it's it seems like I said it seems I was telling them it seems scarier than it really will be because I don't think the tests are very difficult. Um, and when I ask you, it's just intimidating because it's like a summer class, so everything's sped up, and then like, oh yeah, we're learning all this stuff, and it's yeah, it's okay, exciting, and then it's like but like yeah, since you're going through so many different things, it definitely kind of left us wondering like. What do I need to memorize? Or like what's the well, and, so and it's hard because normally I would have just said, "Oh, we've got ten minutes. Don't worry about it." But like, I don't know. I could get a jump start on the Indians in ten minutes, so like we can go. Uh, and uh, like we, the the summer semester wraps up pretty quick. I mean, we're done in um, we I'll met twelve or thirteen times, and we've got eleven or ten left. So I mean, you know, it's, it's not as much as it seems. Um, and so I don't have, I never have enough time to cover all of the stuff I want to cover. So yeah. Um, and I mean, I had uh, when I had summer classes, it was it was terrifying because it <laughs> took I took English too, and he was like, "Cool, so you're gonna I'm gonna need your rough draft of your ten of your fifteen page paper in two weeks, and I'm gonna need the final paper three weeks after that." And it's like it seems like a lot until it's not. And right. So um, yeah, and I had a I almost took a Spanish class where he was like, "We're gonna have our first test on chapter like five in two days." <laughs> and it's like that we literally just started the class. Like my humanities class was like that. I had a withdrawal. It was just too bad. I haven't been in college for five years, so I just like I signed up for 
Yeah. Two classes each. Yeah. Like, I did too much, but. Uh, I mean, summer is hard. Summer is, is a rough time. I like time, it though. Like, I want to learn. I like yeah. I like the stimulation, but it's just it's yeah. just definitely a lot of pressure. Oh, this uh, summer. I, I did summer for the, for the beginning too. I, my first classes were English two and astronomy in the summer, and I. Astronomy. It was. Honestly, I'm a terrible, I was not a good science student, and it was a lot of fun, it was a cool class, but yeah, it was kind of, a, it, was, it was an easy class to like ease me in. It wasn't a lot of science, it was a lot of math, right? Um, but those classes, I mean, they met, um, uh, they met, I think, uh, English met twice a week, and astronomy met three times a week, and so I was just out of high school, I was like, this is great, like I have three hours of class a day, like what is that? Right. Uh, but on, in retrospect, like once you had the fall semester, the fall was like a breeze, because I had the teacher be like, oh yeah, we're going to meet like 45 times, because we're going to meet three times a week for the whole yeah. four months. And so the summer can it can be really hard, it goes really fast. Well, exactly, instead of doing one chapter a week, we were doing three chapters a week. Yeah. Uh, got overwhelming. But then since I had two classes, I was doing six chapters. Like, so yeah. like, what did you take other humanities? Uh, there's in here, art appreciation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's the same thing. The art appreciation class is going to go four months and six weeks. And so normally he's like, well, I have August, September, October, November, and a little bit of December's. But like, yeah, no, no, no. I have like, all the August part of the class is going to happen today. And then like Wednesday, we're going to have to get a third of the way through the September part of the class because we just Seems don't have any time. Absolutely. Have a nice weekend. Uh, and so yeah, it's that's it's that's a rough to dive in in the summer. But I mean, if you can do it in the summer, the fall is going to seem like a fucking cakewalk. Yeah. Because it'd be like this is a whole in the fall. This would be we would already had um, uh, we would met twice, and if this was a normal class, this would have been like a week and a half, almost two weeks of class that we would have already had. So. You know, wow. Yeah. Don't know. Thank you. So yeah, but uh, like I said, take a look at the um, the review sheet, uh, and so the, at least the first part anyway. Okay. Uh, and let me know if there's anything on there that is terribly confusing or, or terrifying. Um, and that way, and if I didn't mention something like forty acres and a mule, which I should have mentioned, um, I will mention it. Um, so you mention that next class, or whatever. And that's yeah, that's the that's the the um, uh, the Friedman. There was a rumor going around that the federal government was going to break up all the plantations, and they're going to give every every Friedman family is going to get forty acres and a mule. And if they gave them that, they would be totally independent, right? They'd own the land, they could farm it, they could eat. You know, you can, if you're as long as you got a piece of land, you'll never starve. So they decide right? not to do that. Uh, well, I mean, it's tough though. If you break up all those plantations, you're going to screw over all those former Confederates. And I mean, we want them to be Americans again, right? And it, it, if you're going to give them a pass on secession, which you kind of have to to get them to be Americans, you can't take their property. I mean, you already took their slaves. You can't take their land. They didn't land isn't illegal, right? The Thirteenth mm -hmm. Amendment didn't free land. Uh, but it's on the hands, well, how can you not, the slaves are slaves, they worked this land their whole lives, they never got a dollar. How can you not give them the land? But of course, if you give them the land, the Confederates have no reason not to just go up and fight the war again. Uh, and so the federal government eventually decides not to do that. But of course, then, if you're free, freedmen, the only thing you can do is that, right? I mean, if you, if you add your own land, like But I feel like on. the whole system's kind of like that, like we're all forced into uh, selling doing labor it's the same thing i mean yeah the, the boy the communists no racist, it's just mankind yeah the communists would were are, are applauding in the background i have you said it because they're yeah it's the that's the literally the basis of the entire economy is the alienation exploitation of labor from workers right uh i mean yeah you got to work you got to live but like, why you know and like why do some people work more than others like why does everyone work an equal amount right uh and so yeah that's 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 the stink of the capitalist economy is we all got to work right and it would be great if nobody had to work but like you have to and it's not but isn't it technically like that everywhere? Like everybody has to work. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, no human society is just where people didn't work. Well, I mean, in the jungle and stuff, people didn't work a lot because food was abundant. But then again, they didn't actually have a whole lot other than the food. So, and I mean, if you want the nice crap that we all have, it's like eh, we gotta work. We're also taught that it's nice crap. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing is we're also taught that consumption is is, is king, and you should want to consume. We're and like have domesticated nice things. creatures. Like yeah. go get your meat real quick. Go get your go yeah. go to go Don't to work to, to do labor for something and something that's basically meaningless to get pieces of paper that you. Used to exchange for things that you probably don't need. But now they're building AI that replaces everyone's jobs. Yeah, that's a, that's a what are we going to do then? And I mean, the good news is that we might, the AI might run our society so well that we all get super rich and we don't have to worry about it. And then the bad news is it might be the Terminator where the AI decides we're just a waste of space and exterminates us because we're, we're vermin and the, you know, we're the rats in the, in the, world. or that the classes do use the AI against us. Yeah, all the rich dudes who build the yeah. AI don't need poor people anymore. So it's like, well, it'd be like Elysium where the rich dudes live on the space station, the poor people live in the garbage dump, and it's like, just go back to, go back to building AI for us because we need more AI to make our cancer treatment free or whatever yeah and so I don't I don't know we've done this before we did it before with automation in the 1880s we did it with computers in the 1980s every time the economy has survived in a way like new jobs got created 
there were, you know, before the 80s, there weren't jobs mass producing computer parts. Do so you think we'll invent new jobs if AI takes over a lot of other jobs? I mean, some, at least some new jobs will be invented. I mean, someone's got to build robots or make robots that build other robots. Uh, and it's hard to say because, I mean, you know, Amazon.com, you could have never even predicted it in the 1970s, and yet they employ tens of thousands of people, yeah. uh, and they, they make everyone's lives a little easier, uh, and no one would even... But have you noticed, like, all these mass companies, like, think about, like, the number one taxi company, like, they have, they own no cars, or, like, just, just think about... <laughs> it's, a, it's a little... Or, like, people have no actual physical business, it's, yep. like, it's, like... But on the other hand, like, what does Mark Zuckerberg got rich doing? Manipulating ones and zeros in a computer, you know, he doesn't own any... Andrew Carnegie would be horrified, because Mark Zuckerberg, who is worth billions and doesn't own... He owns buildings full of computers, is what he owns. Um, because they have all the server farms, they don't have all our space with Facebook data, but he doesn't actually make anything. He doesn't. What does Facebook make? They don't make oil. They don't make steel. They don't make. And they're cars. like the most they're richest just, companies. And yeah, all and so I don't know. It's hard to say because yeah, there is some cause for concern about the fact that like it's sort of like global warming. It may not turn out to be as bad as some people say, but like we should probably do something about it. Well, I feel like it's kind of inevitable that we're going to enter another ice age. Like I feel like that's Maybe. part of history. <laughs> probably, but I would like to not experience that. Yeah. Uh, we Can we just not? <laughs> and so it's one of those things where, like Al Gore said it probably well. He said, you know, maybe the the house is the house is going to burn down. Maybe will, maybe won't. Maybe humans caused it. Maybe it didn't. But like, maybe get a fire extinguisher, and then if it doesn't happen, you didn't waste as much money. If it does happen, you got the fire. But that's what they're doing. The geoengineering that also mess with the. The weather to kind of yeah, I mean, that's a really habitats. scary thing because maybe it'll Why do you think Geostorm or... just came out? Like, they're trying to get people yeah. ready. Like, they're already doing that. You can pay companies to make your yeah. brain and stuff like that. Well, it's, it's, uh, there's some good ideas about maybe you could see the atmosphere with some stuff that would reflect less light or whatever, but on the other hand, like, maybe Contrails. it would. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so, you know, like, we should probably consider this AI thing. Worst, I mean, maybe it won't be a big deal. Maybe AIs will come along. Shut and... up. No, like, it's not true. It's obviously that thing. All right, let's put it in the simplest terms. We have AI right now, the way that everybody deals with it. You have a problem. You need to call this company computer recorded message like there's no fighting the message there's nobody to talk to You're yeah just... but i mean they're not intelligent they're just no but it's not just that but you can't get to a person have you ever had like a service like mm -hmm. that like literally you can't get to a person that's so what you like if you like dealing with the police force like that in dubai right now you can't yeah. talk to a person it's a machine <laughs> and so it's one of those things where it really seems like we should probably it could not be a big deal or it could be horrible but like why not plan for being more serious and then worst case it turns out I, I is not so bad well i guess it wasn't we were just freaking out a little i'd rather be just freaking out a little than not be prepared for the terminator <laughs> uh, you know, and there's some science fiction writers who have, have written a lot about the fact that like maybe it would be great, maybe we would no longer have to do menial labor, just robots would do it. But then like, mm, what would happen to all the people who used to do the menial labor? Well, maybe we'd get so rich that's like Star Trek, where just nobody works and just you get stuff, you just have all the stuff you need. Well, they're also trying to do other things like transhumanism, where they put our consciousness into it. I mean, uh, I mean, I, if you make me a giant, impressive robot body, like I want my brain in that because my human body is fairly frail and will eventually die and like a glorious robot me could live forever and I'm fine with that uh, but on the other <laughs> hand that raises lots of ethical concerns like because if it's a thing that only rich people can do well then rich people get to be immortal and poor people down um, and so like that's that could be you know and what what do you, the, the whole point about like rich people monopolizing increasing shares I feel like they're kind of already doing that with eugenics like through our food industry and like it's like Altered Carbon, the sci-fi novel was about the rich dudes just... Altered Carbon. Yeah, it was, it was a sci-fi novel. It was turned right. into a TV show. It was about a, a rich guy that dies and, of course, doesn't really die because he just clones his body and puts his brain back in it. Uh, and then he gets a military veteran who investigates his murder. Uh, and so like, the, that's the gimmick of the future is rich dudes just live forever and pour people down. Uh, and if you're rich enough, you can copy your brain. And if you're poor, well, I guess screw you then. Uh, and so like that's that's probably the biggest concern about it. Like you say, the rich people will monopolize the AI and make all the money and make increasing shares of all the money and then leave everyone else behind. And then that's not that's not great. Then, then we're not in Star Trek. We're in like Blade Runner. And I'd really rather be in I'd really rather be in the Star Trek future where I have machines that make everything I want than in Blade Runner where I'm replaced by increasingly agitated robot slaves that don't like me and want to it's kill like me. It's like instead we're in the Matrix and we're in all of it at the same yeah, time. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's all in the... This, Hunger Games, um, all of it. Uh, William Gibson wrote the sci-fi novels. He basically wrote the first sci-fi novel about AI. Uh, it was a uh, neuromancer. And he said he wrote three trilogies of sci-fi novels. And the, in the first one, cyberpunk had already happened. And in the second one, it was sort of happening. And then the third one, he said it was just about the real world. Do you know what year this is? Or like what the... Um, he wrote them... You're saying it's one of the first? Yeah, he wrote them in the, in the early 80s. Um, and so Neuromancer was like... Might have been late 70s, early 80s. 
Uh, and then the most recent trilogy he wrote like a few years ago. One of them was set after 9-11. And so, is that like, isn't the 80s when the Transformers came out? Or is yeah. that, is that sooner? Yeah. <laughs> and so he said by the third trilogy, he didn't need, they were set in the real world. They weren't sci-fi novels in the distant future. They were now because he said cyberpunk and computers and implants in people's brains and the internet, it's all real. He said, 